Back in the day when my girls were born, it was not easy to share photos and videos with loved ones, but you have a fantastic option available, the Family Album app. The Family Album app was created in 2015 and has operated in the long term to give parents a secure and easy way to share photos and videos with loved ones. It's a totally secure personal haven for your family's memories. I love that there's no third party ads, no unwanted eyes. Now let me share some of the great features that make the Family Album app a go-to app. First off, the app automatically sorts photos and videos by month, allowing you to swipe back in time and see how your child has grown. No more scrolling through endless feeds or searching through folders. Another cool feature about the Family Album app is you can order eight free photo prints every month to be delivered to your home. It's really nice to have some tangible pictures to hold on to or share to document each month of your baby's life. Plus, the Family Album app has unlimited storage and it is totally free. Yes, you heard that right. No more worrying about running out of space or being bombarded by ads when you're just trying to relive those heartwarming moments. So if you are still trying to use other messaging apps for your kids' photos, it is time to level up your family photo game with a free photo sharing app. Head over to the App Store today, search Family Album, it's all one word, download the app and start creating a legacy of love one photo at a time. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Diaper rash can be one of the worst experiences your little one has to go through and keeping their delicate skin happy and healthy shouldn't require a spatula to apply thick, goopy treatments that can be just as irritating and uncomfortable as the diaper rash. Instead, try Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is a pediatrician approved skin protectant, free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It was developed by a mom who is also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products Products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. Use just a small amount of Dr. Mom Butt Balm to help soothe your baby's skin and feel good about making the right choice. Nothing comes between you and your baby, not even diaper rash. Check out Dr. Mom Butt Balm, available on Amazon or Walmart.com. Is it possible to have a happy pregnancy and birth experience with a hospital birth, even if you've never met the person who delivers your baby? Why, yes, yes, it is. And you are going to hear all about it in this birth story episode with Aaron. Welcome to the All About Pregnancy and Birth podcast. If you're having a baby in the hospital, you are giving birth in a system that too often takes away power from women over what happens in their own bodies. I'm Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins, a practicing board certified OBGYN, who's had the privilege of helping well over a thousand babies into this world. I've been a doctor for over 20 years, and I'm here to help you take back your power, advocate for yourself, and have the beautiful pregnancy and birth that you deserve. This podcast is for educational purposes only, and it's not a substitute for medical advice. Check out the full disclaimer at drnicolerankins.com forward slash disclaimer. Now let's get to it. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 249. Whether this is your first time listening or you've listened before, thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm so excited to share this birth story episode today from Erin. Erin had what she described as a long but beautiful 29-hour labor. Even through uncertainty about when to go to the hospital and painful back labor, she describes it as an empowering experience. Her husband even got to catch their daughter. She felt that preparation and great prenatal care throughout pregnancy allowed her to have a positive birth experience. Erin actually did not expect to be someone who loved her birth story, but she absolutely does. And she wanted to share her reassuring perspective because she felt like it could be helpful to other pregnant women so they can know that birth can be beautiful, even through pain and in a hospital setting. Now, full disclosure, I didn't realize it until we started talking, but Erin actually gave birth in the hospital where I work. 
I was not a part of her birth experience, sadly, but I do know her doctor very well. I know her nurses. I know the midwife who was at her birth. And so it was just nice to hear from a patient perspective that the place where I work does provide a great, beautiful birth experience. Now, I mentioned that Erin felt preparation was the key. One of the parts of that was childbirth education. She and her husband both actually went through my childbirth education class, the birth preparation course. And the birth preparation course is my online class. Get you calm, confident, and empowered to have a beautiful birth with a specific and laser-focused intent on getting you ready for hospital birth. You can check out all the details of the birth preparation course at drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll. And if you use the code Dr. Nicole, you will get an additional 10% off. All right, let's get into the conversation, the birth story episode with Aaron. Thank you so much, Aaron, for agreeing to come on to the podcast. Um, we were talking before I started recording and I can't believe it, I'm realizing not only are you in my city, but you gave birth at the hospital where I work. So this is going to be interesting. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and your family? Well, so uh, my name's Erin, obviously. Sorry, I get so used to doing like my work intro. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> so um, I'm married to my wonderful husband, Chris. We've been married for two years um, and we have a beautiful 20 month old daughter. Um, Hartley. She's named after my, my grandfather. So Aww, yeah. I love that. And we yeah, have a sweet our cute little dog heart um mini. So that's okay. that's my little family. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Awesome. And if you want to share what you do for your work, you can. Yeah, I'm a visual merchandising director for Target. So oh. I make all the stores. I make sure they're all pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. I'll have to tell my girls who love Target, of course, <laughs> that you're the one who helps make Target look pretty. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a cool job for sure. Yeah, that is a cool job. All righty. So why don't, in order to understand the birth, we have to understand the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about what your pregnancy was like and what your prenatal care was like? So I'll start at like the very, very beginning. So I, mm -hmm. we were not trying to get pregnant, but it was okay. like the best surprise ever. Really kind okay. of a funny story. It's like, right, yeah. I found out I was pregnant because mm -hmm. I was in a fitting for my wedding dress uh -huh. and I fainted in my wedding dress oh. um, during my fitting, which had never happened to me before. So right. I went to the doctor and, um, you know, that's when we found out. We were super, super excited. It was okay. only like a few weeks from the wedding. So it was all good. Gotcha. It, didn't, okay. <laughs> it didn't change anything. <laughs> but and it was just like such a cool thing to find out because we had had plans like a month after the wedding. That was our goal. So it ended up being like super serendipitous for us. Oh, okay. So you y'all were going to start trying yeah, right away anyway. Yeah, we've okay. been together okay. for a long time before we got gotcha. married. So we were super excited. But that's how I found out. And so I think like that kind of set the tone for me throughout the pregnancy because I felt uh -huh. like we were so lucky. Uh -huh. So I felt really anxious and nervous the whole time because I almost felt okay. like we got too lucky, if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, it makes one 1000% uh, makes sense. So yeah. I feel like I had like heightened anxiety because of uh -huh. that throughout um, my pregnancy. But right. overall, I'd say I had a really good pregnancy. Nothing okay. too, too crazy. Like at the first few weeks, I had a lot of nausea, um, but no morning sickness. And then that's okay. a food aversion. So I think I lived on like bread and ginger ale for a couple of weeks for sure. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So the beginning was was a, a little harder, um, but nothing crazy. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to think what else. I yeah. Did you and you saw a doctor for your care? I did. Yeah, I saw. Mm -hmm. So I saw a doctor. I did a ton of research mm -hmm. um, before. And it kind of worked out because it turned out that my normal OBGYN is like a really uh -huh. well thought of person to to use for pregnancy. Uh -huh. So she was yeah. absolutely wonderful. But my first my first doctor's appointment for my pregnancy, I, you know, I was uh -huh. 10 weeks um, and I had high blood pressure at that. Mm. Yeah. So okay. I was on the low dose aspirin throughout my okay. entire pregnancy. OK, OK, OK. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you and you. It didn't have high blood pressure or anything before. No, nope, never before. Okay. And I don't know okay. if it was a little bit of like, I was so nervous, and, but yeah. better mm -hmm. safe than sorry. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, were you able to see the same doctor for your visits throughout the pregnancy or did you see different ones in the practice? 
so I knew that she might not be the one to deliver my baby, but mm-hmm. I was able to see her for every appointment. Okay. Except like certain scheduling things. So. All right. Awesome. And did you ever have to go on any medicine for your high blood pressure or just the aspirin? Just the aspirin. Medicine? Luckily. Yeah, that managed it. Okay. Awesome. So what did you do to prepare for your birth? Well, so like I said, I was like a little bit of an anxious person. Uh I don't really like unknowns. Um, And pregnancy and birth (laughs) is such an unknown. Yes. And I was really scared. (laughs) To full transparency, I was so terrified of the idea of giving birth. Okay. So I did like crazy research. So the first thing, I drive a lot for work. Uh So the first thing I did was find podcasts. So obviously I found your podcast (laughs) and I binged it really, really fast. So Uh I Listened to a ton of podcasts when uh-huh. I drove, uh-huh. um, read blogs, books, all that good stuff. Okay. Well, are there any particular podcasts or blogs or books you remember? Uh, well, yours. Okay. Let's oh, see. Well, I wrote you. it down so I don't <laughs> yeah. forget because I knew I would I would maybe forget. Let's see. And I listened to the birth hour a lot. I mean, I tried a bunch of different ones. Right. But right. I found that those two were the ones that... Like I enjoyed the most and felt gotcha. most comfortable with. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And the birth hour has so many episodes. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. I could truly prep for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And then what did you do for, did you take any childbirth education classes or anything like that? Yeah. So I did a lot of things. I took the hospitals class mm-hmm. and honestly it was good. Like there was nothing wrong with it, but we just mm-hmm. struggled with the scheduling thing, the having to sit for a few hours. So we did gotcha. your birth class. Okay. Um, mm. And I loved it because I could like listen to it in the car too, uh-huh. as opposed yep. to having to sit down Right. since I drive so much. My right. husband was actually engaged and interested in it. So that <laughs> that's what we did from a learning awesome. perspective. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And y'all, I swear I didn't know ahead of time. Like, I don't like handpick people or anything. <laughs> like, it's part of some of the things that we collect. But uh, um, I did not handpick her because she says she liked the course. <laughs> <and so. laughs> but I'm glad you did like it. I am glad you enjoyed it. So what were some things that you wanted for your birth? Well, I was so nervous about it and scared. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted to do anything that I could to make it easier on myself. Okay. So... I wanted to feel super comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had listened to, you know, all the podcasts in the Uh class. And I had, Uh like, the string lights prepared and Uh my focus photo and things Uh like that. Um, I wanted it to be calm. Okay. I didn't want anyone there but my husband. Okay. Kind of didn't go that way. Did you think about a doula at all? I actually had a postpartum doula. Oh, we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, Yeah. we'll talk about that. So you said it kind of didn't go that way. We'll get into that. But (laughs) is there anything else you wanted? Like a lot of people these days, and this has gotten to be more routine, thankfully, Mm -hmm. but like delayed core clamping and skin to skin and things like that. So we did. I wanted delayed core clamp. Mm-hmm. clamping. I wanted skin to skin. I wanted the golden hour. And uh-huh. the cool thing was that I found out that that was like standard procedure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where I <laughs> delivered. So I didn't even yep. have to really put that in my birth plan. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. And then did you talk about these things with your doctor during your visits? I did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anything, you know, I was nervous about like hearing about things like episiotomies and all mm-hmm. kinds of crazy stuff. So I mm-hmm. talked that talked about that with her and mm-hmm. she was she's so good at managing my anxiety throughout the entire process so right. she made me feel really good we went through my birth plan but everything i wanted like i said she's like well we'll do that no matter what we'll do that no matter what we'll do that no matter what um so yes she made me feel really good about yes yeah, and that's that helps to set the tone going into things it makes you feel so much more comfortable exactly yeah yeah and then you said you were scared is there anything in particular that you were really scared about I was worried about the pain, honestly. You know, no Uh, one can really describe a contraction. And then you hear, I felt like the whole pregnancy, I would hear Mm -hmm. like people either push for like, it's going to be this totally medical process Mm -hmm. or it's going to be this totally, I don't know, unmedicated, natural, Mm -hmm. beautiful process. And I was like, I just don't know if I buy that. Right. So I was really nervous about what would it actually be like. And it, it turned out to be totally opposite of what I thought it would be. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's get into it. What happened with your labor and birth? How did everything oh, go? My goodness. So my daughter came exactly one week early. Okay. So I, it's so funny because I was on these calls at work too. Mm-hmm. And I like 
was supposed to be doing all these things the next day right. after these calls and I went into labor and I couldn't do any of those things. Isn't that, of it's, course, that's how it happens. But it's so funny because during my, the early stages of labor, I'm like texting all these people at work, like, I'm so sorry, I can't get you your size. <laughs> my boss was like, stop. Stop. Yes. <laughs> like, stop. You're having a baby. She's it's like, going to be ridiculous. okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I went into labor like almost exactly at midnight. So okay. I like, went to bed. And it kind of, I started feeling like I had like a Charlie horse kind of uh-huh. in my abdomen is how I uh-huh. describe it. Um, so I went into labor then and like, I didn't wake my husband up. It wasn't that bad. I just knew okay. something was happening. Okay. Um, so I went downstairs. I like watched the office and kind of, uh-huh. <laughs> once it started feeling a little more intense, I woke right. my husband up and we started timing the contractions. Okay. Okay. And then how long before you went to the hospital? <laughs> so... Here's the thing. I trusted the app, which uh-huh. I would advise maybe like if it, it didn't feel intense. I was like, okay. this is just a Charlie horse. Right. But the app is saying I'm at 511. So I called the on-call doctor probably uh-huh. around like 4 a.m. And okay. I said, well, like, here's what's happening. What should I do? They said, well, go ahead and go in. So I went in, you know, and I was... I probably went a little too early. Okay. I'd okay. Say. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So what happened? What happened when you went in? Um, so they took me into triage. Everyone mm-hmm. was so kind. Um, and I, I'm really thankful. Like my provider, she didn't require me to have cervical checks. She pretty mm-hmm. much asked me if I wanted a cervical check during my appointments, and I had never had one um, until I went into labor. Okay. Um, so I had my first cervical check there and I was okay. only one centimeter dilated. So okay. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but they still like hooked me up to the monitor uh-huh. or, you know, to take a look at my contractions. Mm-hmm. And they said like, something's definitely happening. Right. Um, but you're not far along. And so they kind of had me like chug a ton of water. Mm-hmm. So I drank a lot of water and they had me go walk around for an hour. So I okay. went and walked around the hospital doing like the curb walking and right. everything I could. Right. And then I went back up to triage after an hour and nothing had really changed. So <laughs> I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I know it's disappointing. If we had a dollar for every time that happened, we'd be rich. But um, <laughs> uh, um, so then did they discuss or what were the options that they discussed or were they like, maybe you should probably go home? Yeah, they were really nice about it. They gave me two options. So they said, mm-hmm. you can stay, but realistically, like you'll you'll be probably kind of bored all day and, right um you might be more comfortable at home and mm-hmm. i was like so embarrassed because i was like i listen to all these podcasts in right. my classes they say don't go early and i went <laughs> early but so i think that kind of set the tone for the rest of my labor okay um which you'll find out about later but okay okay I, yeah um, and don't feel embarrassed I, i'm telling you i'm it, it happens so often it happens to those of us who are even OBGYNs, <laughs> like it's <laughs> Because sometimes you just don't know until you know. So and you've never experienced it. Exactly. So. Like you've never like you know there's something happening, mm-hmm. but then it's like, okay, what is the time? So don't don't feel bad <laughs> at all. Expecting parents who are looking for great nursery decor, this message is for you. As you prepare for the beautiful journey ahead, let Home Threads be your partner in creating a serene nest for your growing family. At HomeThreads.com, explore a collection designed for comfort and style during this special time. From cozy nursery essentials to soothing rocking chairs, Home Threads has everything to create the perfect home for your little one and always at the best value. If you like unique items, then you definitely need to check out Home Threads. We got a silver picture frame from Home Threads that is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those timeless classic items that will last for years to come and it fits in any space in your home. Be sure to visit homethreads.com forward slash Dr. Nicole today and receive a code for 15% off your first order. Home Threads, love where you live. So then when you went home, how did things go when you went home? So it definitely started to pick up. Mm -hmm. Um, it was pretty intense. I was able to like eat a little bit, but realistically, Mm -hmm. you know, you hear all these things that say, try and eat while you're at home before you go back to the hospital. I was so focused. I didn't want to eat. Okay. So I ate a little bit, but really I, I napped, but it was just too intense and consistent. And then 
I, I labored at home for a long time. And okay. I pretty much spent the whole time either in the bathtub or in the mm-hmm. shower. Just okay. trying to get okay. through it. Yeah. Okay. How long were you at home? Oh, my goodness. I think we got home. We went to the hospital at 4, got home around like 8. Uh-huh. And then I stayed at home until probably 10 p.m., which was okay. pro- probably a mistake. Well, I mean, not necessarily. So, so why do you think it was a mistake? I was in, I, I was in back labor. Okay. And it was hurting really, really bad. Okay. But I was too scared to, this is like, you know, I wish I had listened to my body a little bit more in that moment uh-huh. Uh-huh. because I wasn't even ready to go at 10. I'm like in the shower on all fours. And my husband was like, I'm calling the doctor. Like, okay. this is insane. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So then you went back to the hospital and how dilated were you when you got to the hospital? I was six centimeters dilated by okay. the time I got So there. you were in reborn labor at that yeah. point. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely make it from the parking lot to the... <laughs> labor and delivery so were you still worried that maybe this isn't it or just i think i was yes my husband knew and i had i had like a tens machine Mm -hmm. and i had it on my back and Uh i had it like all the way up and i still i think my brain just was just in denial or something okay (laughs) okay okay but can could you in hindsight can you see the difference between like those early contractions and then when things really started ramping up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I think if I had gone two hours sooner, it might have been a little different, probably. Gotcha. Like, I can can remember exactly when they started to feel more intense. It's very vivid. (laughs) And and totally, like, grabbing all all of your attention. All I can do is just work on getting through this contraction. Yep, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you got to the hospital and then you were six centimeters. How did you feel when they said you were six centimeters? Centimeters. I, I mean, I was like very sick at that. I mean, maybe not sick. I was uh-huh. throwing up. I was shaking. Re- I, it didn't even compute with me until after full transparency. Uh, okay. Um. So I was just like, I just need someone to help me at this point. So I okay. think I didn't even. <laughs> Got it. Got it. So, it, but hopefully you at least knew, okay, this is it. And I'm actually oh, yeah. staying at the hospital. Oh yeah. I mean, by yeah. the time, because you, we call ahead and tell them that we're mm-hmm. coming. So mm-hmm. they were waiting for me at the door. Okay. Um, and they walked me direct. I didn't go to triage. Okay. They, basically, two nurses helped me down the hall to you okay. know, get to my room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they knew. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. So then what, what did you decide to do for pain management? I always knew I wanted an epidural. Okay. Um, I was a little nervous about it, but I uh-huh. just, I was so afraid of the pain. Got it. Um, which in hindsight, like, I don't think I'm as, I wouldn't be as afraid next time. Like, I okay. know what to expect for right. sure. Right. I wouldn't wait so long to manage uh-huh. the pain. But, uh-huh. you know, I did get an epidural and my anesthesiologist mm-hmm. was like my hero. <laughs> 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 I remember his name. I remember everything about him. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Now I'm curious, who who was the anesthesiologist? Dr. Estes. Yes, he is, you know, he is he is retired, but he oh, is no. Yeah, yeah, he retired, but he is a magician with epidurals. So. He was also so kind mm-hmm. because I was throwing up mm-hmm. and I was shaking, and all I'd heard was like, you have to stay still, you have to stay still. And I think in my brain, I kept going. Dr. Estes, I can't, I can't stay still. I can't right. stay still. He's like, it's okay. I got you. He was being so nice to right. me when right. I was right. like panicking. Right. I know it's his job, but <laughs> I will never forget that kindness. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not every anesthesiologist is kind like that. So I'm glad you had a good experience. So did the epidural work well? Oh yeah. Okay. It worked really well. I will say there was one spot in my lower right hip. I'm sorry mm-hmm. if you hear my no, dog. I have the door yeah, no, closed, but she's... <laughs> no worries. That's okay. So I had a spot in my lower right hip that I could still feel the pain. And that was not great because I was in back labor, but they moved uh-huh. me around. Okay. And within like 15, 20 minutes, like that was covered as well too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, 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 good. So then what happened from when you got the epidural after that? So the epidural was around like 11 p.m., 12 Mm -hmm. a.m., I think, somewhere Mm -hmm. in between then. And then it was kind of like this was when I started to really like have a – I feel positive about the experience beforehand, even with some of the kind of like strange things that happen. Like I'm proud of myself for that. But then this was the time when like everything started to feel really – 
really good. Like I enjoyed, I found it to be a calming experience. So okay. um, that's when they like turned down the lights for me. They made mm-hmm. it really calm in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the most amazing nurses too. Uh-huh. So they uh-huh. turned that, they made that experience just like absolutely wonderful for me. Awesome. Um, so I ended up like, putting on an audio book and uh-huh. just kind of relaxing. Right. And it was great. I felt like I could really start to visualize, like, I'm about to meet my daughter. You know, this is a beautiful, like, I was in a beautiful room. I felt right. like I was being well taken care of. So then right. it kind of changed the experience for me. Oh, good, good. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. So yeah. then uh, when did you get to completely dilated? So what happened during that time? Well, so... Throughout the time from like 11 until my daughter was born mm-hmm. at like 7.58, she was in my right hip. So the okay. nurses would come in every hour. They used the peanut ball uh-huh. and they like changed my position. So they mm-hmm. got her in the right position. Um, and then what else? So they would do, they did cervical checks. Uh-huh. Um, like every few hours they come in and mm-hmm. ask. And so around like 6 a.m. they came in. And there was a nurse in training and then like my primary nurse and the mm-hmm. nurse in training asked if I would be okay if she did a cervical check. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, of course, you know, why not? So she does the check and she says, you haven't, you're still at six centimeters, like nothing has changed. Mm. And I pan, I'm like, oh my goodness, right. how is that possible? Like right. I feel more pressure. And then right. the the nurse who was training her, she's uh-huh. like, what, are you okay if I check? I said, God, yes, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So she does the check and she's like, no, you're, you're 10 centimeters dilated. Like you're ready to go. I'm sure okay. be very soon. And she actually accidentally burst my water. So uh, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She was so apologetic. I was like, nope. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like hour 30 now. So right, right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then you felt good. You were completely dilated. Yeah. And then what happened after that? So they kind of let me. They, I, they didn't do any Pitocin or anything like that mm-hmm. the whole time. They let me, my body do what it needed to do. And right. so around probably an hour later, I, I said, I'm feeling a lot of like pressure. Mm-hmm. And I heard it would feel like you needed to poop. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's what I'd describe it as, but I just okay. felt like intense pressure. Right. Um, and so they checked and they're like, yep, like it's, it's time to push. Right. So, um, she had me do a couple test pushes and uh-huh. I had done, I'd listened to your episode on yoga, prenatal uh-huh. yoga. Uh-huh. And so I had focused a lot on yoga. I'm like, right. move this baby down. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'd done a lot of yoga. And so I started doing like my yoga breathing and I, they were like, you're, you know, you're good to go with the pushing you've right. got in. So okay. I was trying to push down. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got yeah. it. So how long did you push? So I pushed for about 45 minutes. Oh, that's not long at all. Yeah, I didn't have to push long. Uh And it was like this weirdly joyful experience for Uh me. And I don't Uh know that many women would describe it as that. Like, I love to tell this story. (laughs) If you can't tell. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What was joyful about it? So it was right around shift change Okay. um, for the nurses. And Uh it wasn't my doctor who Uh delivered my daughter. It was a midwife with the practice. Okay. But it ended up that... The nurses who care for me overnight, they wanted to stay uh-huh. and like help me deliver my baby. So right. I had, I think my husband and I were talking about this in county. We had like six people in the room. So I had two oh. midwives uh-huh. and then I have four nurses in the room. It <laughs> actually, they were like a cheering squad. Right. <laughs> we were just chit-chatting uh-huh. like in between pushes. Right. Um, and the coolest part was like the midwife. I thought my husband would <laughs> struggle, but he was excellent. And they were like, do you want to catch the baby? Right. And so they let him catch the baby too, which, Aww. so he got to be like a big part of the experience. But the Aww, whole that's time, really nice. it was awesome. We were chatting, we were joking. Right. Like, I felt good. I felt so right. supported and safe right. in right. that moment. Right. Um, right. They were doing like, olive oil to help with the stretching Uh and tearing which i didn't know they were gonna do but i'm Uh so thankful they did yep Um, yeah i yeah i don't know it was just a really i remember it only in a positive way and then we had one of them offered to take photos and videos so i have these amazing photos Mm -hmm. of my husband catching my daughter and like I just, I'm so proud of that moment. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? I love it. I love it. I love it. So I 
presume they brought her right up on your chest? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So immediately. And it's funny when I look at the pictures, like I also noticed that her cord was around her neck, but Uh the midwife is so fast. Like I hadn't even noticed until I look back at the pictures. She comes out. My... They hand her to me. She's unwrapped the cord, and you know there she is, right on right. my chest to start a right. golden hour, um, okay. which was awesome. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Good, 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 good. And uh, did you have any have to get any stitches or anything like that? I did. Uh-huh. I had a one first degree tear. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, it was. Yeah, that's a, about as minor as you can get. Yeah. yeah. So and like the epidural, like I said, was great. So I didn't feel, I didn't feel like the ring of fire or anything mm-hmm. when she was born. I didn't feel the stitches. I was just kind of like you for it. Cause I was holding, you know, my daughter. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And then delayed cord clamping and everything, yep. of course. And then the one thing too, that I forgot to mention that yeah. I did ask for too, was at the end of the golden hour, I wanted to breastfeed. So I asked if they'd help me latch her too, right at the end, which okay. they also did for okay. me. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. And then did she stay in the room with you? She did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I kept her in the room. They offered the nursery, but I just, I don't think I wanted her to at that point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, so you made it this far in the episode and I'm thinking it's because you enjoyed this podcast. Well, if that's the case, then I have a favor to ask. Creating and producing the All About Pregnancy and Birth podcast has been one of the greatest joys of my life. I'm so grateful to have each and every one of you on this journey with me. Your support and engagement means the world to me, and it's what helps keep this podcast going. But here's the thing. Producing a podcast involves time, effort, and resources from recording equipment to an editor, hosting fees, coordinating guests, countless hours spent researching and crafting content. It all adds up. And that's where I could use your support. I've never wanted to turn all about pregnancy and birth into a paywall. I want it to remain accessible to everyone. That's why I've set up a way for you to support the show financially if you're able and willing. If this podcast has helped you during your pregnancy, your birth, or your life, I'm asking you to consider contributing to the show. Your support will help cover production and team costs and ensure that I can continue delivering the episodes you love. So in the month of March, head to drnicolerankins.com forward slash support and contribute whatever you can. Your support, no matter how big or small, makes a significant impact. It helps us continue delivering high quality content and ensures the future of all about pregnancy and birth. Again, that's drnicolerankins.com forward slash support. Thank you so much for being part of the All About Pregnancy and Birth community. Now back to the show. And then, so then what was the postpartum period like in the hospital? And then I guess once you got home, let's start within the hospital. What was postpartum like? So the hospital, it's the same thing. I think I just was lucky that I had such great, like a great care team. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they came and checked on me every hour, which is hard at nighttime. Um, But I found it really hard to sleep anyway, because I think I like the adrenaline. I don't know. Sure. Um, It was definitely tough, like the first time getting out of bed and having to go pee and Mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. They helped Mm -hmm. me with that. But otherwise, Mm -hmm. it was good and pretty, you know, they had a they had a lactation consultant who came Uh and helped me at my request. So I really appreciated that as well. Right. Overall, really good experience for me. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you said you went, so then you went home mm-hmm. and you said you had a postpartum doula. I did. Um, yeah. I'm, I know I'm super privileged. Like my company actually covered my postpartum doula, which is just, are amazing. you serious? So serious. Yep. I, any type of doula, I had a certain, like a stipend and it's offered throughout our entire company. That is pretty amazing and not typical. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm so blessed. Like I know that that's just a huge privilege. Right. I could choose right. to have a doula for birth or a postpartum uh-huh. doula. Uh-huh. And I just decided that what I wanted was a postpartum doula. Okay. Okay. So mm-hmm. at what point did you, what, what, at what point did you hire the postpartum doula? Um, so I started researching providers in our area, mm-hmm. um, like a few months before my daughter was due. And okay. so basically I hired them like six weeks before she came. Okay. So they were prepared and ready to go at whatever 
Gotcha. You know, whenever she should, decided to show up. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And this was specifically a, a postpartum doula. Specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So then at what point did she meet you at the at your house or did she come to the hospital or how did that work? So it was up to us. They would mm-hmm. have done either. But okay. we decided to be at home with um, her for a week, our daughter okay. first, before uh-huh. I had them come. Like we alerted her that she was born and then uh-huh. she said, well, do you want me to start whatever night? Because they're prepared for like X amount of time that sure. she could come. Okay. So I said, I want you to start on this date. And then we chose to have her not during the day, but overnight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was also a lactation consultant. So it was great. Gotcha. So how how frequently did she come? And how long did you, like how, how long did the relationship last? Yeah. So the nice thing is you can kind of decide based uh-huh. on certain providers. So we chose to have her for three nights for six weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had her for a long time. I will say I don't know that next time I would need six weeks. Okay. It's the only thing I do differently. Gotcha, gotcha. And then she just helped with like feed, like what kind of things did she do, I should ask? So they took care of me too, like Mm -hmm. if I needed anything while I'm upstairs or whatever and they're with my daughter um, sleeping, they would like bring me water, snacks, things like that. She also would help me with um, breastfeeding because at that point I was still having to wake up like every two hours. So she, right. um, if I wanted rest, I could say, you know, keep the baby in her nursery and, and take care of the baby and then bring her to me. Gotcha. Just so that I could recover a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So would you, do you think you would do it again, have a postpartum doula? Yeah, I think it changed a lot for me from, I felt more rested, which helped me kind of learn my daughter a little better, I feel like. And then it changed my breastfeeding relationship too. Okay. So I think that was super helpful. And then they taught me so many things. So it was two women, by the way, that would like alternate. Okay. And they taught me like tricks for gas. Right. And how to, I was so slow with changing a diaper way back then. Now it's like a toddler (laughs) and it's a whole different ballgame. But they taught me how to change a diaper really quickly. Right. It was just, it was, I would totally do it again. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And I'm just still blown away that your company paid for six weeks of a, I mean, that's a decent stipend. That's not like a little stipend. <laughs> so, no, it's, yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. It's not something that like, I, I try to tell everyone in my company now uh-huh. because it's kind of hidden in of there. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you can have a doula, like right. look into it. So, right. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And I guess what, what made you decide like, what was your thought process behind uh, birth versus postpartum doula? Well, I think to me, it's crazy because I don't think of it in this way now. Mm-hmm. But I felt like birth for me was just, I didn't knew I didn't want to have a medication-free birth. So I felt okay. like it was going to be like a medical process. And uh, so I didn't need one. Okay. In hindsight, maybe it would be different this time because I don't right. think I think of it as a medical process anymore. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But thankfully, it sounds like you had a lot of support from the oh my nurses gosh, yeah. and staff and things like that. Yeah. 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 And um, you said the doula helped change your relationship with breastfeeding. What was breastfeeding like and how did having the doula help that? It's hard. <laughs> it's <laughs> there so we go. Hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'm still, fi- you know, at that point, I was still figuring out how to safely like hold, hold a baby because you mm-hmm. can practice. But when it's a real living, breathing human right. being, it's, right. it feels like a whole different ball game. So, yeah. yeah. And in the hospital, while they were great, you know, I only had the lactation consultant for like 15 minutes mm-hmm. in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And she, when I had my, my doulas, they would help me find different positions that work right. better for my daughter. Like these are ways that you can, um, your, your breasts hurt. You know, yeah. at that first week and they showed me different ways that I could like relieve pain and things right. like that so that right. it kept me going um, and then it ended up being a really we had a great I breastfed my daughter for 12 months so okay. it ended up being great gotcha. and I don't know if I would have kept going if I hadn't had that support gotcha gotcha okay yeah. and then how much time from work did you take off again I'm I'm pretty lucky I got 16 mm. weeks off okay it's, Still doesn't feel like enough, <laughs> but I got a lot of time with my daughter. And then my husband also is very lucky. He got 10 weeks off. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. So she was yeah. home with at least one parent for almost six months of her life. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, so did you all stagger your leave? We did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I think I know the answer to this question, but how do you feel about your birth experience? I love to, t- I love this story uh-huh. because it was totally opposite, even with the pain and the back mm-hmm. labor and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so proud of myself mm-hmm. and my body mm-hmm. um, for what it was able to do. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was nothing but a positive experience. Like I only have happy memories of it. And I'm right. so thankful. Right. Oh, everybody deserves to feel that way. Like regardless of, you know, you hope everybody has happy memories. So that's wonderful. So then as we wrap mm-hmm. up, what is your one piece of advice? One thing you would tell someone who's having a baby? Well, so for birth, I'd say uh-huh. trust, trust your body. And, uh-huh. you know, if, something feels off it's probably off Uh and then also know that your body knows what it's supposed to do um so you don't have to be afraid Mm, you know because that's my that was my thing i was so afraid and then it's like why was i so scared you know my body knew what it was doing gotcha gotcha i love it love it so where can women connect with you you can say nowhere (laughs) if you're not on social media or anything like that yeah i'm not a big social media (laughs) okay yep totally fine there we go All righty. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on and share your story. And I'm, I'm, it's hard to, I'm like, I talk a lot and I know I work at a place that, that treats people well, but it's just nice to hear from the other side, someone who actually had a birth experience there that everything went great. Yeah. I will never have a baby anywhere else. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't that a great episode? It's so nice to be able to hear again that the place where I work also from the patient perspective does well with giving people a great birth experience. Now, you know, after every episode, when I have a guest on, I do something called Dr. Nicole's Notes, where I talk about my top takeaways from the conversation. Here are my Dr. Nicole's Notes from my conversation with Aaron. Number one. Those pregnancy apps are can be quite helpful, but I want to echo what Erin said, to trust yourself, trust your body, trust your instincts. She knew that things weren't quite intense yet when she went to the hospital the first time, but she went in because the app said it was time for her to go because of the 511 rule. And the 511 is just some guidelines for contractions, contractions that are five minutes apart or less, that are lasting for a minute and they've been that way for at least an hour. Now I've actually seen this on the flip side where things weren't quite that 511 rule yet, like maybe the contractions were seven minutes apart and they weren't quite lasting a minute, but they were crazy intense and ramping up fast. And I've seen on a few occasions where people ignored that in their bodies because it wasn't the quote 511 rule And then by the time they got to the hospital, they were like eight centimeters or nine centimeters or about to have the baby. And it was quite overwhelming, actually, because things didn't unfold the way they anticipated and they felt like they had no control over things. It was just all very rushed. So listen to your body and know that you can trust yourself. You can trust your instinct. These things are guidelines. They are not hard and fast rules. Okay, number two. I'm going to shout it from the hilltops forever and ever. You need to do some childbirth education. Childbirth education is so important to help you be prepared for your birth and help you to weather the things that can happen during your birth. And in Erin's case, everything went well And maybe she didn't, I'm not going to say she didn't need childbirth education. Maybe she she didn't have to put all of the things into practice that she learned, but she didn't know that going into it. And when she went into it prepared, when she went into it, having discussed her birth plan, her wishes already with her doctor, that just set her up to be in a better frame of mind and a better mindset when she went into her birth because she knew she was going into an environment where people supported the things that were important to her. I firmly believe that that mental space to feel more reassured that you have good support, a good doctor, a good hospital on your side helps your body to work better because you're not carrying that extra stress. And that is where childbirth education is so important. 
And in her case, childbirth education was also great because her husband went to it as well. Sometimes you, your partner ain't trying to go out to classes or the schedule is difficult, where, which is where something like my class, an online class comes in handy, the birth preparation course. Again, that's drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll where you can check it out. But really, please do some childbirth education, good quality childbirth education. If it's not mine, do something because it is so, so important. And then the final thing I want to say is a word about postpartum doulas. I so love how Erin put some thought into when a doula would be most helpful for her. In her case, she felt like a birth doula wouldn't necessarily be as helpful. So she felt like she could use that amazing benefit, by the way. Can we talk about that? Everyone should have that. That amazing benefit through her job of having a doula and putting it towards a postpartum doula. Now, one thing I'll say, in her case, she said the doula came three nights a week, I believe for six weeks. People think they can't afford a postpartum doula. Like you hear that and you're like, well, I can't afford that. However, you really can tailor the use of a doula to what may work for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be three nights. Like some people may pay for seven nights straight for a couple weeks, or you may pay for one night a week for a few weeks. Even one night can help give you some space and some rest and things like that that can be really, really important. And I love how she pointed out they weren't just helping her take care of the baby. They were taking care of her as well. And that's what a great postpartum doula is going to do and give you some of that insight, give you some of that advice, give you some of those tips, some of those tricks. Also really helpful if they're a certified lactation consultant as well. That came in handy for her. Now, if you want to learn more about a postpartum doula, check out episode 115 of the podcast, Preparing for Life with a New Baby with postpartum doula uh, Valerie Trumbauer. That's a great episode. You can check it out at drnicolerankins.com forward slash episode 115. So there you have it. Please share this podcast with a friend. Also subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening to me right now. I so, 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 so appreciate it. And do check out the birth preparation course, my online childbirth education class that will get you calm, confident, and empowered to have a beautiful birth with a focus on the hospital. That's drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll. Use the code Dr. Nicole to get an additional 10% off. So that's it for this episode. Do come on back next week and remember that you deserve a beautiful pregnancy and birth. <laughs>